In this lesson, we're going to make a small node program that highlights how you might use some of the node core modules and access some properties of your environment in a kind of real world situation. So the program will make a very basic blogging system, which will really just write lines of text to a file, and then we'll serve it with a basic HTTP server. So we'll get started by importing our modules, and the first I'm going to import is obviously the file system module, so we can write to a file. And the second is another module that we haven't come across in the course so far, called readline. And readline allows us to create an interface to access data from the command line, and we pass it an object that has an input and an output property. And I'm setting the input and output properties to the standard input and output streams available on our process object. And you'll see how this works in just a little second, but first let's set up some information about our blog post. So here I've just set a variable with the file name that's going to contain our text, and I've also accessed the command line arguments to set an author and a title, but if those command line arguments aren't passed in, we'll set some default values. So here we're going to use readline to ask a question on the command line. So the question function will actually put some text onto the command line, and the result of the text that's entered as a response gets stored in the post content variable. So just to demonstrate how that works, you can see when we run the blog.js program, we're prompted to enter some text. And you can see that's just repeated back to us when we console.log the post content. But let's actually construct a more meaningful string with all of the data that we've got available to us now. So here I've just created a template literal and stored it into the blog entry variable. And inside it, we've simply got the title that's wrapped in some dashes. And then we've got some information about the author and what date it was published. And then finally, the post content. And I'm just going to update the indentation of this so that it doesn't include that white space in the actual file. And now with that blog entry variable, I'm going to write that content into our blog file. So here we're just using the append file function on the file system module and writing the content of the blog entry variable into the file that we specified. And you'll notice the callback is an example of an error first callback, so we're going to handle that error if there were any problems. If not, we'll see a message saying that the blog post was written successfully. So let's just close our read line just so that the program doesn't hang at the end. And if we run our completed program now, and if we enter some text, You'll see we get a message saying that the post was written successfully, and if we examine the myblog.txt file, you'll see we've got our header, our author and date details, and finally the post content. So we didn't supply any command line arguments this time, so the title and the author were set automatically for us. So let's try it again with a title and an author. So you can see our txt file has been updated with a second entry, and of course now we've got an author and a title set in our second blog post. You'll notice I had to use quotes around the title, because otherwise Node would look at each word in our title and think each was a separate argument. So there we have our completed command line blogging system. It's obviously not going to replace anything like WordPress in the future, but hopefully you've seen it's a good example of how you can use the core modules to start to build a real world application. Just to finish up, let's actually serve this content over a HTTP connection. And just for speed, let's go back to our streams.js file that we worked on a few lessons ago. And instead of accessing the hello.html file, let's serve the myblog.txt file. And let's go ahead and run that. And we'll head over to Chrome to see the result. Now you can see the contents of our blog being displayed on a web page. Of course, if this was your intention, you might want to put some HTML tags around the content that you're producing in your blog. But as we'll see in future lessons, there are tools and packages available to you that will make all this process a lot simpler.